Question four, spreadsheet. Um, the four essays participant spreadsheet contains the names of the participant who won the medals. All right, let's go open that spreadsheet and work in the sheet one worksheet. Four point one. Rename sheet one to SA. Right click, rename, or you could just double click, like a slow click, SA. 4.2, change the tab color to any color of your choice. Right click, tab color, and you can literally make it anything you want. You'll see the tab color only really shows when you've clicked away, then it shows that the tab color is different. Work in the scores worksheet. 4.3. Set the print area to cells A1 to I53 and ensure that the printing page order is down then over. All right, so A1 to I53. There you go. Page layout, print area, set print area. Now, it also said that the page order needs to be down, then over. Now that I can go find over here, sheet, page order, down, then over. Okay. And you'll see over there is also where I can see what the print area is and that I've set it correctly. 4.4. Insert a formula in cell E6 to determine the current age of Alan Hathaway, use the date of birth in column D. Only the completed years must be displayed and the formula should work for any year. All right, so we need to de determine the current age. So we can't use the actual date that you write the paper. You have to use the function today in order to be able to determine the age on any day that you open up the spreadsheet so that it shows you the current age. Um, only the completed years must be displayed. All right, so the first step would be, I always do this in a bunch of steps, um, and if you'd like, you may use it in, um, you may use building blocks and do it in separate steps over here. Um, just remember, do it in one row so that it is actually able to copy down if it's necessary. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just determine how many days this person is old. And that I can do by using the function today minus the date of birth. All right. Don't know why there are decimals over there. I'll just remove those. Um, oh, the decimals were probably there to show me when I do the division that I have all these decimals because we don't want that. All right, so that's how many days this person is old. So what we need to do is we need to determine how many days are in one year. That's 365.25 if you want to be precise, but both of those get a mark. So what I want to do is I want to um, divide this entire um, answer that I've gotten by 365. I can't just say divide by 365 because then it will only divide D6. So I want this whole answer to be divided by 365. And then you'll see it actually shows a decimal point. Now they said um, they want the number of completed years. So in this instance, it's quite difficult because if I would have done just a normal round, just like that, or if I'd actually used round, just the regular function, it would also just give me 43. But the thing is, if this was 43.95, it should still only show the completed years. So it needs to round down. So I want this whole answer rounded down. Now let's say you don't know how to put this whole thing in a round down. Two ways of doing it. The one way would be to cut all of this, leave the um, equals mark, and start with round down. I like to use my function builder for this. And then that whole function that I've already done, or that whole formula actually, because I've been doing divide and minus and whatnot, that whole thing goes into number. And the number of digits are zero because we want the current age in a whole number. So there you go. It still shows the decimals because that's the way it was formatted. But if I remove them, 
um, my function is fine anyway. There wasn't a mark awarded for removing the formatting of the decimals. All right, if that does not work for you and that's a bit too complicated, what you could also do is you could cut this entire function, including the equals mark, um, and go paste it in another cell, such as over here. You'll notice what I did is I didn't cut the cell itself. I actually went into the cell and cut the contents of the cell because that way the cell references stays the same. All right, so my cell references and everything is correct over there. And then I can just use my round down of this number to zero decimals. Both marks would have, um, or both ways would have awarded full marks. And what I like to do is I actually like to format it as general because it then it shows decimals if they are to show any, but it won't show if there aren't any. 4.5. Insert a function in cell L4 to display the most frequent position, column F, achieved in the competition. All right, so over there, L4, the most frequent occurring position in column F is used by doing a mode. In Afrikaans it's modus. That is what you cry. Um, it's the mode. So it's just the regular mode one that we're using. Um, you don't get penalized if you use the other ones, I don't think, but rather use this one to be safe. Um, and I want the mode for all the numbers in the F column. There you go. 4.6. Insert a function in L6 to determine how many times Carl Leclerc has obtained first position. And you'll see this one counts five marks. So we already know this is going to be a more challenging um, calculation. All right, so in L6, we need to determine how many times Carl Leclerc has obtained first position. L6, let's just have a look here. Um, okay, there is his name. And how many times he obtained first position. Okay, so I can just see by hand, it's two, if this is sorted, which it seems to be sorted. And I think that's what uh, confused a lot of people, is they just did a count if of these few cells, because they saw Carl Leclerc is actually in the, um, is sorted already. So all his uh, positions are here in the same uh, spot. The problem is this little sentence at the top of the paper. All formula and functions should be inserted in such a manner that the correct results will still be obtained if the existing data changes. So because of that, even if it's sorted differently, or even if another cell is changed to call the clo, then this needs to work correctly. So that's why I can't just use these few cells over here. So let's go try it. They said how many times he obtained? Was it first position? Yes. All right, so the way this works is to do a count ifs. So what count ifs does is it counts how many times one record adheres to two tests. So before I start that, if I would say count if how many gold, it would count how many cells there are that has gold. But if I would count how many athletics gold, then I would use a count ifs because then it would be able to test is this athletics and is this gold before it counts it. So this would be one, this would not be counted because this one isn't gold. So that way it would be able to carry on testing and only if both of these conditions are met, it would actually return a number or count it, you know? All right, so let's try it, count ifs. This is the first, let's just open our function builder, that's just the easiest. So my first criteria range, we all know what a range is, it's our cell range. Ne? Okay, so that's my first criteria range. And my criteria is Carl Leclerc. Now I know it's an effort to spell this, but you may not click on the cell for the same reason that that little sentence says at the top. If the data changes, the functions should still work. So if they realized, oh, they made a mistake and this should be Chloe Semenya, then this should actually still work. I can't use a cell inside my range as my criteria. I may never do that. If his name stood somewhere outside here, or even if you wanted to copy it 
and paste it outside here. That's outside of my data table, then you are allowed to do that. But you may not do that. You may never refer to criteria inside the actual range. All right, so that's the first criteria. You'll see it's added my um, parentheses automatically. My second criteria range is the position. And it is extremely important that both these ranges have exactly the same number of cells. If you clicked one cell too low, so like you started that at F5 or something, it would not have worked because both ranges need to be exactly the same length. And this position needs to be one. There you go. I have my answer. You'll see the syntax starts with the first criteria range, then the criteria, second criteria range, criteria. And you can carry on like that for quite a long time. You'll see all of these square bracket ones are optional and it will continue giving you more and more and more criteria ranges and criteria as many as you need. 4.7 Insert a function in cell L8 to determine the second highest amount that an athlete should be paid. That's a very plain, straightforward large. Remember, a max can only return the largest value in a set of values. Large gives me the ability to actually say how many th largest so not the first not the largest but the second largest or third largest or fourth largest how whichever one i'd like to specify so large it starts with an array that's my array all my cells over there and comma k k is how many th so i want the second highest eh? and close my brackets that's my final function then Please note, um, in the papers, what they've started doing is in the past, they would give you a mark for your range, no matter what function you used. So this counts three marks. The one mark would be for large, one mark would be for your range, and one mark for this comma two. Um, in the past, they used to give you this mark, uh, irrespective of what function you used. But they actually changed the rules, and they've notified all the teachers at the beginning of the year and they told us in Gauteng, I don't know how many other teachers all know about it, but if this function that you used is completely unrelated to what you were supposed to do, you actually don't get the mark. So like, for example, if you used a max here, you would get your range because you clearly had the correct idea, even though you didn't use the right function. If you had used something like an if or a V lookup there, then you clearly didn't have an idea and then you actually don't get a mark for your range either. Work in the medals worksheet. 4.8. Now, firstly, I can't believe how many people misread this instruction. Work in the medals worksheet. So, so many people did the subtotal on this page. And you weren't supposed to. There's a medals worksheet for a reason. All right, so 4.8. Use the subtotal feature to display feature, not function. Use the subtotal feature to display the number of medals per sport. All right, so in other words, what they want is per sport, how many medals are there? This would be, let's see, 17. All right, so to do that, I select my data. And to use the subtotal feature, I go to the data tab and I use subtotal. Now, in this case, they were nice. They've already sorted the column, which I need to do a summary for. So it's per sport. Because they said per sport, I know the sport needs to be sorted alphabetically. And if it wasn't, I would have had to first go and sort it. But in this case, it was already sorted. So every time at each change in sport, so every time this changes from athletics to cycling, from cycling to lawn bowls, um, then I would like to have a count on the medals because I want to count how many medals there are per sport. 
OK. And that was all you were required to do.